My name's uh, David Martin. I'm proud to be a part of this Condi heritage, and I claim this Condi ancestry. I'd like to say a few words tonight about my great-grandfather, uh, Thomas Sharp Condi, just so you can put this all in line. Uh, Thomas Sharp Condi was the father of Gladys Condi, who Mark just uh, spoke of. I never met him. He uh, died in 1951 when I was, or when he was the age of 93. Uh, but I'd like to speak to you tonight as if I were him standing before you today speaking to you. So here goes. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Thomas Sharp Condy. My parents, Gibson Jr. and Cecilia Sharp Condy, were pioneers. I am their youngest child. Born right there in their adobe house uh, in Salt Lake City. I was born in 1857, the same year that Johnston's army marched toward Utah. Even though I was born in Utah, I am 100% Scottish and proud of it. I grew up in Salt Lake. We belong to the Sixth Ward. And I remember when I was 15, they built a new chapel over there on Third West. Next to the church lived another family, also from Scotland. They came over from from Scotland uh, with my folks. They had a daughter close to my age and I took a liking to her. Margaret was her name. And from our front porch, I could look down the street and see her house half a block away. When we was older, I convinced her to marry me. All my brothers and sisters lived close by. When Margaret and I first married, we lived with my folks in their adobe house. My brother worked at the, street, the city street department and he got me a job working on street construction and the streetcar lines. Then after that, I did sheep herding with my, uh, my, with my brothers. We'd go out to Skull Valley, out past Tooele. I had a little sheep herder wagon with a little kitchen and a bed in it. We'd stay out there for weeks. When I'd come driving home up the street in my, in my wagon, the kids would all get excited and come greet me. The wife would always have a grand meal prepared for us. And if I was lucky, I'd have a currant pie or a raspberry pie. And boy, was that delicious. And then I'd share stories and entertain the children about the coyotes out in Skull Valley. And that would scare little Gladys to death. We wound up having nine children in all. However, number three, little Nellie, she got diphtheria and died when she was just six years old. And we buried her the same day. And boy, was that sad, especially for the other little children. Finally, I got tired of working and being gone all the time, so I sold the sheep and I bought some farmland in Granger and I bought some properties on our same block in Salt Lake. I built some apartments and a corner store. The money from the farm and the store and from the rental properties, that was enough to pay all my bills and I was done working. As the children grew older, I gave the farmland to my boys so they could support their families and I gave the rental property to the girls. I once had a one-seated buggy that I liked to take out to the farm. My children all took turns. They'd ride underneath. Then I had a, a Surrey wagon with fringe hanging down the sides. We liked to take that out on Sunday rides. I finally bought an automobile, a Buick. I didn't dare drive the thing, so my son-in-law would take me places and drive me around. I never got used to those controls. One time he was taking me home and we drove up behind the house up to the garage. And he didn't stop in time. And I'm saying, whoa, like it was a horse or something. It was hard to transition from wagons to, horse, to cars. Well, my story wouldn't be complete without saying something about the cabin we built up Provo Canyon, Vivian Park. It was 1917 when we chased Annie and Blanche up there and found a place to build the cabin. We added on to it. We spent our summers up there every year after that. It was good for Gladys's hay fever and we all liked it just fine. Then, when the wife died in 1930, I was all alone. I'm thankful for my daughter Blanche who moved in with me and took care of me. 
and my other daughters who cared for me as well. And also my grandsons, my, gra my grandkids who sat with me on the swing, on this front porch swing in front of my house. Sometimes I wonder if they was paid to sit there with me. They'd get the dadgum swing going so fast, you know. But then uh, when I got tired of them, I'd pull out my coin purse and I'd give them a little bit of money and shoo them off to the store to get some candy. I'd also try to give them some... Uh, Try to give them, to, uh, teach them a lesson at times, and I wasn't afraid to, to say you you darn fool when they did something foolish. And uh, but oh, how thankful I am for the love and care that they provided me. Sometimes they'd give me a shave or cut my toenails. I loved my family very much. That was what mattered to me most. And I'm proud of what I see in them all today. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.